UConn Huskies take to the road again this week. Their farthest road trip ever to Provo, Utah to take on Brigham Young. Hi, everybody, and welcome to The Blitz. I'm Joe D'Ambrosio, radio voice of the Huskies. And as always, we kick off the show with Bob Diaco. And Coach, I don't know, I got the sense the Navy game was kind of like the Missouri game where you kids played hard, you made plays, there was a chance to win, but you left too many plays on the field. Yeah, and I think that, you know, a part of it is is even the execution was raised, right. but at different times. So the offensive execution was not in sync with the defense. So the so Navy got out to a to a lead. Then when the defense settled into the to the flow of the game, the offense was a little bit out of sync. So we were giving them opportunities. Uh, the defense was giving them opportunities down the stretch that we couldn't capitalize on. Right. So we just got to put a full, you know, three phase, four quarter game together. It was funny. Their numbers on first down weren't great, among the lowest that teams have gained on you on first down. But they seem to make big plays on second down and get third and manageable. Yeah, and and. When you watch the tape, and I'm sure on their end, um, you know, the guys had a great understanding of what we were going to do. Right. And we had players and hats in the appropriate positions. We just uh, needed a little bit higher level trigger and a little bit faster trigger from an eye key movement progression standpoint right. that turns that, that gain from six into three or from eight into four or from eight into six. And then you end up with third down and five, six, seven, rather than third down and one, two, and three. Right. So we had a lot of third down and one, two, and three, and Navy's almost virtually impossible to stop in that yardage uh, uh, in threshold. That sh short yardage yeah. situation. And we saw a lot of Tyreek Beals. Number two had a great game, uh, caught a beautifully thrown ball by Sheriffs for a 39-yard yeah, touchdown fun. pass, and ran those bubble screens. When we talked about Tyreek earlier, Bob, you talked about the fact that what he does best is catch the football, which is important yeah. for a wide receiver. What has he improved on since his number's been called more? I think that, uh, you know, he's he's got an understanding of how he fits into the patterns. So some moments where, uh, you know, he's got a mandatory outside release that he otherwise wouldn't have done. Now he's starting to get those little small, small pieces done properly. When he wants to create some space for a bubble, He's now got the appropriate alignment to help him do it. So he was getting lined up in the formation. Right. The specifics of being two yards inside a particular landmark or two yards outside a particular landmark may have been lost. Now he's starting to get that uh, level of aptitude. Friday late night in Provo, and obviously the week is compressed. Travel is on Thursday. There's really no day off. What's the toughest part about getting a team ready, especially if you're the home team? It's one thing. If you have to travel, it's another. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a big deal. It's incredibly hard, um, but exciting. Uh, that's the only way for us to look at it. Um, this team beat the snot out of us a year ago, and, 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 that's a, and that should give us energy and excitement to go out there and, and, and just remedy that and moment and, and have a chance to show how far we've come. It's a Brigham Young team that is older because kids going on Mormon missions. They've got a lot of experience and they are a big, big football team. Yeah, I don't know that I've ever, I don't know that I've ever heard of a 22 year old freshman. Right. So, um, it'd be Well, what, some of them measure the media 27. were 22 year old freshmen because they couldn't get to school for three years. 27 years old when he graduates. Um, so, but all kidding aside, it's a big group, a physical group. The offensive line is gigantic. The wide receivers are big for a reason. The backs are big for a reason. Uh, the defensive front is strong and stout and big and long. They do their jobs well. Um, block destruct, physical safeties, uh, downhill running, aggressive safeties. So it's, a, it's an excellent football team. We had a chance to see that firsthand a year ago. Um, They've, they've been through the fire at the beginning of their first four games. Right. So, um, you know, they're, 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 they're a heck of a team. Should be two teams that are uh, looking to get back on track. Absolutely. All right, Bob Diaco, head coach of the Huskies, getting you set for BYU. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Joe. What a pleasure for our player profile to bring in number 53, the Co-captain from Denmark, Andreas Kanapi. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me. Andreas, the Navy game, you guys moved the ball up and down the field. It seemed like you had some pretty good rhythm. What was your takeaway from playing the midshipmen? Um, I think the takeaway is to, uh, to know that we can move the ball a lot and we, we can keep doing it consistently throughout a game. And I think uh, that it's, it's great to see and it's, it's exciting stuff to, to build on. 
You have had such an impact on this program in such a short time that your teammates elected you as a captain, one of the four captains before the season began. A, what was that like for you to get that honor? And B, what's it been like being a captain during the season? Um, it, it was it was a great honor for me because it, it wasn't something I was expecting. Uh, I, I've just been the guy that I am uh, ever since I got here, and, and, and I'm very thankful that, that the guys uh, chose me to be one of the one of the captains for the team. I think it's a like it's it's a, it's a it's a huge deal. It is a big deal, and you're yeah. not you're not a particularly loud person. At least the chances that I've had to be around you. Are you more like a leader by example? Um, yeah, I, I think I'm more uh, more of a leader by example, but I, I, I do get like get vocal, but it's more within the within the four walls of a uh, of our program, and and I think that's that's a good way of, of having a guy like that too. That it, that's not necessarily the most vocal guy. Uh, all the time. Do you ever get annoyed at your teammates and speak to them in your native tongue so they don't know what you're talking about? Um, yeah, not necessarily. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I do a little bit, but it, but it's not necessarily because I'm annoyed. It's more if, if if something happens, like instinctively, you say yeah. something like a saying or, or something like that in, in your native language. That'll so. be good. We'll get one of those later yeah. in the show, hopefully. Guys will look at me a little weird when <laughs> that happens. <laughs> the offense, as we said, has, has, has played much better in the first four games this year than they did a year ago. From the offensive line standpoint, Andres, what's the biggest improvement? I mean, we're maturing uh, uh, as a group of guys, and we're coming together really well. Um, we're, we're still young. Like, all of us are still, like, like young players, but... Um, I definitely think that, that coming together and, and and learning like learning the game and learning how to play uh, play for, for me at least learning really how to play offensive line is it, it, is a huge huge improvement in, in understanding the game. All right, time to have some fun with the segment with the players. We like to call three and out. You're a big fella, six eight and a half, three hundred and ten, three hundred fifteen pounds. Yeah. There. When was the last time you were actually able to buy clothing right off the track? <laughs> um, Does that mean a while ago? Yeah, that's a, that's a long time ago. I, besides the last time I went to Destination XL, I, I, I don't think I've been able to. You went to Destination XL, sounds like a place that many of us should, you should try. <laughs> What's the one thing you love about the fall season other than football? The weather. The, change, like the change of the weather, you go from having the sun and the real, like be, it being real hot and then you turn into the fall and you see all the leaves fall off. and. And before we know it, like before the season's done, we have snow too. I love that you almost get three seasons within the, within the season. You're a snow guy? You like the snow? I love the snow. Really? Yeah. All right, well, that separates us besides the fact that you're athletic. <laughs> What's your go-to pregame song? What's playing in the headphones? Uh, it's, uh, it's called Hungry. Um, it's made by a guy called uh, Rob Bailey. Okay. It's, it's a great song. All right. If you want to get fired up one day, that's, uh, that's the one I'll to go to. before the game on Friday night. All right. Of your teammates, which one do you think would be the most likely to move to Denmark? I don't know. I've, Rich Levy, maybe. Really? Yeah, because he seems to have such a big interest in, in the place, and he wants to go real bad. Now, we know from your story that you're a competitive archer. Could you see one of your teammates being, a, being an archer? I don't know. That might Samra be like the thing. Samra seems like that could be a, an angle for him. Yeah, may, no, yeah maybe. Maybe <laughs> Samra. Maybe Samra, yeah. And finally, Andreas, which one of your teammates thinks thinks that he does the best impression of a Danish accent. Steve Shemi. by really? far. Yeah, oh yeah. He he thinks he makes the greatest impression of me in general. And it's not good? No, it is good. It's just, I don't think it sounds like me, but All right. well, that might just be me. Why don't you, why don't you stand up the segment by saying, thanks for being with us in Danish. Tak for vær her en god aften. UConn football is back on the road this week for the furthest regular season away game in program history. So we're back on Fairfield Way to find out how much these Huskies know their foe. Who is UConn football playing this week? BYU. Uh, BYU. Uh, I think BYU, right? BYU. UConn's playing BYU. What does BYU stand for? Um, Brigham Young University. Brigham Young University. Brigham Young University. Brigham Young University. We are the UConn Huskies. What is BYU's mascot? The Cougars. Cougars. Cougar. Uh, BYU are the Cougars. Where is BYU located? Uh, Provo, Utah. It's in Utah. Provo, Utah. Utah. We're in the American Athletic Conference. What is BYU's conference? Uh, Mountain West. Uh, used to be. It did used to be. They're not in a conference. Uh, they're independent. 
BYU used to be in the Mountain West, but now they're an independent school. UConn football is taking on BYU this Friday on ESPN2 at 10.15 Eastern time. Who's going to win? Obviously UConn. UConn. Uh, UConn's going to win. Obviously the Huskies. Time now for our View from the Press Box segment. A delight to welcome one of my friends, Gavin Keefe, who covers the Huskies football and men's basketball for the New London Day. This is a hot seat. We've had Daniel on. We've had Ostrad on. We finally just decided to get the brains of the media. Well, a lot to live up to. I Exactly. Tell you. Gavin, what was your take from the game on Saturday? It seemed a lot like the Missouri game where UConn played well, but not well enough to win. Yeah, Joe, you know, they've come a long way. They're, they're really competitive bunch. You know, they're able to execute some things early in offense, and then they bogged down a little bit, and then the defense came on in the second half after having a tough first half. So they really haven't gotten in all the facets of the game together. But I really like the way they play. They've been in every game this year. But let's face it, Navy's triple option is really a bear to stop. I mean, they're, they're one of the best offenses in the country. Yeah, Bob Diaco called it a, it destroys your central nervous system. Uh, Andrew Adams was superb, 17 tackles, a career high from the safety spot. And I know that means that running backs were getting through, but I just think he's been UConn's most valuable player thus far this season. He has, you know, and he's a great kid. He's a leader on the, on the defense. You don't want to see him get that many tackles, but he's involved. He's around the ball all the time. He's the leading interception guy, just like he was last year. So he's a terrific player to have back there. I also think that it was a coming out party for Arkell Newsom. We never saw him get that many runs in a game, and they kept him on the field for the whole game, taking him out only once in a while. I think for them to be good, though, they need a dose of Newsom and the power of Ron Johnson. I think so, because neither one of them are really big backs, so I think you need a fresh guy out there, but Arkeel has really come a long way. He used to be a guy that you just want to try to get outside. Now he's running inside a little bit and, and gaining yardage, so he's gaining some confidence, and, and I think Dixie, and he can catch the ball out of the backfield. That's another thing. Coach Siaco talked about how, you know, Ron Johnson has to come along in that area a little bit. But I think that with the two of them together, keep a fresh guy out there, that would help. And I think the receiving core has gotten better now that Tyreek Beals, the freshman, has been worked more into the rotation because you just can't concentrate on Noel Thomas because if the offense does that, the defense will do that. I agree. I mean, they, they did a great job using Beals on the outside during the game, and he got some good positive yardage. They obviously have a lot of confidence in him. He's a young player. He's come a long way. Coach Yako's talking about how his young receivers, he really likes even some guys who haven't played yet or really played that much yet. He, he thinks he's a bright future, so I think that's a really promising area. It's good to see good to see Noel get a few more touches at times. It seems sometimes he goes too long before we, between receptions, so it would be nice to get the ball in his hands a little more. Gav, what's the biggest challenge UConn faces this week going out to Provo? Well, I mean, one, BYU is coming off a, a 31 nothing loss. I mean, yeah. that, you never want to see that. BYU's played a brutal schedule three or four out on the road against very good teams. So just, just going out there, and BYU's dealing with some injuries too, so they're beat up a little bit, but I think BYU is going to want to get back on track next week. And, uh, and, and I think the biggest challenge is facing a, a very good team coming off a loss, even though they're banged up. Can we count on you being up at 10-15 to listen to the radio broadcast? Uh, I might have to see if I can push my limit a little bit, but I, I think I will, Joe. We'll be worth it. Let's put it that way. Always is. Gavin, thanks. We appreciate it. Thanks. Gavin Keefe, who covers the Huskies. For the New London Day, you can follow him on Twitter, at Gavin Keefe. Don't forget, it's an 8.30 radio pregame time on Friday night from Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Kickoff is at 10.15, and if you can't listen to the game, you can watch it on ESPN2. That does it for another edition of The Blitz. For Gavin, for Andreas Canapi, Coach Bob Diaco, and the best video crew in the business, UConn Video, I'm Joe D'Ambrosio. Thanks for watching The Blitz. <laughs>